Okay, I have the circuit working. It has the filter on it. You can see there are one, two capacitors on there. And, well, one thing, if I wanted to go with, of course, there has to be some dispersion. But if I wanted to go with the original series Enterprise, I could do it this way. Now, the LED is getting washed out really bad on the camera, and this is a good camera, which is surprising. But in life, in person, that's not pink, it's purplish, because it's going through the blue um, nacelle. Now, the nacelles need to be painted better. This isn't painted very well at all. You can tell it's just barely blue tinted. Okay, and I'm going to paint it up better. But if I wanted to do that, I could do a pink LED with a blue nacelle, and that would come out pretty nice. Now, <clears throat> I've been kind of building the Rothacon ship without the damage before it got torn apart. The Rothacon Enterprise has blue nacelles. It's only the Motion Picture Enterprise that has the purple nacelles. So I'm trying to decide if I go with purple or I go with blue. I do have some purple LEDs, but they don't look very good and they're not very bright. So going with the pink with a bluish tint to it, in person that is purple. So I might do that. I'm also trying to figure out how to use just a couple LEDs to light this up with instead of doing LED tape or something like that because there's just no room in that nacelle. None. You're not going to get anything in there that looks right with LED tape. So, I'll get it figured out. I know I will. I'm smart enough for that. I'll be back in a little bit. Up next is to solder that down. Then I can start working on the um, strobing circuit. That one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but not much. My biggest challenge right now is to keep the Tomodachi and the Thunder Paws off my countertops while I'm working because up here in the hobby room we have some of the biggest windows in the house and there's no curtains on them so they like to come up here and sit and look out the windows they're cats what do you expect well anyhow I'll be back at this in a little while I only have about 10 minutes left tonight and I'm not going to try to solder this thing together in 10 minutes instead I'm going to go work on something else uh I'm not painting these in 10 minutes either I'll see if I can get those painted tomorrow or the next day but I'm going to work on something else. I've got some sanding to do and a few other things. So I'll be back in a little bit. Hello, everyone. Now, that was the second try to get that circuit to work. The um, navigation light circuit was no good at first. It took me a long time because I had some wiring backwards. That's why that didn't work. I no longer have wiring backwards on it and it is functioning fine. It's on this side over here. Okay. It's not currently powered up because two reasons. One, I don't have it set. I mean, I don't have a filter on this one. Two, I don't have the blink rates correct. That might be correct for the Enterprise NX. That is not correct for the Enterprise 1701A. The duration between the blinks are fine, but the blink rate is much quicker. I mean, it strobes. So I'm going to have to change my resistor values and get it correct. Okay? Um, there's two resistors that control this. And, um, well, I will link to the relevant video I made on this originally. So you can follow this, but I need to change two different resistor values and I know which resistors they are. Okay. So I'm going to start fiddling with this thing with my Rio stats here, my variable resistors and figure out what the proper resistant rate is for this thing and dial it in and get this thing blinking the way I want it to. Because if you look at the Rathacon, and I'm, I'm trying to imitate the Rathacon. I know that isn't necessarily what some people like, but I like that movie. But on the Rathacon, Rathacon, you can see the blink rate. It's really quick, staccato, like this. And it it's lights up for just a brief second. 
So if this is lit for too long, the pause between my breaks might be okay, but I got to shorten the light time. So I'll come back in a bit and show you where I'm at with that. Now, once I get this circuit working and this circuit working, and they're both working on the same breadboard, then I'm going to start transferring over to this. I'm going to put the circuits on this thing. Okay. This will fit in the base just fine. Yes, I'm going to put the circuit board in the base, not in the model. The NX is big. I can put the circuits in the model if I want. I don't have to. But this one, this is a tiny model, and this circuit board isn't going to fit in there anywhere. So I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to run wires up into the model to power everything with. I'm also going to experiment around a little bit and see if I can get a whole bunch of... LEDs working together blinking at the same time because I need four or five of them blinking at the same time I don't plan on trying to do that strobing with fiber optics. It just won't look right Okay, I have some extremely tiny uh, SMD LEDs that I'm going to use for the strobe lights on this thing. They should be in scale just perfectly fine Okay, so I'm gonna get going. I'll be back in a moment and show you how that works Okay, everyone, what you're looking at is the circuit live while I'm adjusting the rheostat. Now, I get the feeling that this is a pretty low resistance I want to get that blink rate where I want it. If I turn this way, I lower the resistance. Okay? And you notice it's almost blinking on and off. And I turn it some more, and you see it's starting to strobe. And that's pretty close to what I want. I think I want a little bit faster than that, however. And here, this will help some. I think I want it faster than that. So, let me turn it just a little bit more. And I'm afraid if I turn it too much, because this thing... Yeah. I need it faster than that. And that. And a little bit more. That's getting closer. It's a process of trial and error while I turn this dial. And the problem is this is a one meg uh, potentiometer. And since it's one meg, a tiny dial changes the resistance very quickly. Now that's getting closer to what I want, okay? I still want it quicker, and I'm about to put on Rathacon and take a look and see. I'm bottomed out the potentiometer right there. I need to measure that resistance and lock that thing down real quick. And I think I need to have it a little bit lower. The problem is this potentiometer is, again, too large. It's one meg. The other one I have is 5K. I have a couple of others. I have to look at them and see what their values are and see if they're worth using on this. So I'll be back in a little bit and show you what I finally end up with. All right. I got this working. I had to change potentiometers and I have this one soldered up wrong so go figure it's not working right voltmeter some wonderful things for telling that okay now looking at it I need to shorten the time between blinks but that's getting really close to what I want Okay, that's too short. That's getting really close to what I want. Now I need to shorten the time between blinks. If I can get the time between blinks to match what I see on the screen, that's going to be good enough. That's probably close to good enough, but the time between blinks needs to be just a little bit shorter. Okay, and that's the series of resistors that are over here. And, well, that's quick to attempt. I can cut that off. I can just bypass one of them really quick and see if that does it, okay? Now, i got to turn a light on because, well, I'm getting old and can't see all that well. And I'm going to yank out one of these resistors here. 
Now I got to trace how the resistors are running and get this pin here. And let's see what that does to the circuit. And I killed it. Really? Yeah, I see why I killed it. It's not even connected. The positive lead came off. Okay, so I killed it completely. All right, so I have to trace and see. Oh, I found out what was wrong. Yep. No, I'm going to have to trace and see what's going on. Apparently, I have to up the resistance there and not lower it. I'll be back in a few minutes and show you what's All going right, on. everyone. That's almost perfect. It's, it's so close to what I see on screen, I'm leaving it. So I'm about to shut the circuit down and measure my two resistors. I've got one here and one here. I measure those, write down the numbers, then I know what resistance goes in this spot, and that is the R3 spot. And this one is the R2 spot. So if I get the two resistances measured, I know what to put in there. I might have to make some resistance up using standard resistors or get a potential meter. I mean, small pots and put them in the circuit board. I'd rather use hardwired resistors. That way it can't change no matter what I do. Uh, once I get the resistors in there, then I'll put the filter on and power up both circuits at once and see what that looks like. I'm gonna swap this red LED out for a bright white one like we see on the screen so we can see that and put this red one where the pink is so we can see exactly what this should look like okay and then I got my circuits done and this is to me is the hardest part because I haven't done this in a while okay so I'm making mistakes that I wouldn't if I've been doing it all the time and getting the timing of these things right is always a pain then it gets transferred to my circuit board. Once that's in, I can back to work on the model, painting it and light blocking it and drilling some more holes because I have some more holes to drill for windows because I eh, screwed up some of that. And then I filled it and now I got to redrill. But anyhow, I'm happy I got this where it needs to be. Just time to measure some resistances. Once they're measured, I will come back and tell you what I used in the two spots so that with hardwired resistors in there so that anyone who wants to replicate this can okay i'll be back in a bit okay i have replaced one of the potentiometers real stats whatever you want to call these things i've replaced one of them with resistors r2 comes out to be 1.3 kilo ohms now that's not hard to do. You use a 1K resistor and a 330 ohm resistor and you got your 1.3 kilo ohms. This one measures out at, of course I'll lose the page, when I'm starting to talk on camera. That isn't that how this always works? That one is 85 kilo ohms. Now I've got to generate an 85 kilo ohm resistor. Now that's not going to be a standard resistor, but 247K resistors come out to 94 which is a little too high but I can get away with that I'm gonna look and see 47 K with two 10 K's gets I could do it with four 10 K's if I have to I'll get there I just have to look okay so let me start digging around and see what I can do to come up with that resistance resistor I need I just found a 5.6 so if I'm gonna find a 50k and a 4k I can get away with it but my resistor pile is a mess so I will be back in a minute and we will see what I can come up with and I will pull this and show you guys but to me right now that's good enough mr. thunder how you doing are we doing good ah button to the nose to the camera are we Get that tangle off you. How we doing, Mr. Thunder? How's the king of my household? Hmm? Are you surviving with that baby in the house? Hmm? Not gonna talk. You were talking to me. Every time I turned the camera on, you quit talking to me. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you do. 
It's fine. You gonna help me work tonight? Hmm? You're gonna keep the house clear of things? Like lizards? Oh, that's his job. All right. Say goodbye, Thunder. You had your star moment.